got any leapers in the house this morning? You can still leave for joy. Come on now. Not ashamed. Some are not able to do that. You just kind of move up and down. You thought I was worse, baby.
it's so hot you can walk there. It's a little hot outside. And that life is fast, please. Go ahead, go ahead.
the back, side to side. That's what we're here for today. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, let's worship God.
Good work to follow with that kind of seat. As Brother Robin Johnson makes his way. Somebody say, God bless Brother Robin Johnson. He makes his way up here this morning. We're so thankful that, that he is with us. His family is with us. We're grateful for that. Let's slip our hands up to the Lord where you're sitting right now. Hallelujah. Let's just worship for a moment. Hallelujah, God. This is that hour where the true worshipers have come today to worship your Father in spirit and in truth. We worship you with our voices. We worship you with our hands lifted. Let's, let's just kind of give God a wave offering for a moment. Hallelujah. Let's just kind of wave at God today as if to say, Lord, I'm just scooping up all my praise and sending it heavenward. I'm just sending it back up unto you today. Hallelujah. What a beautiful presence of the Lord that's here today. Are you like me? You can be seated for a moment. Are you like me? You don't understand how some people are even functioning without God. Because, I mean, they have funerals. We have funerals. They have problems. We have problems. They have uh, doctor visits. We have doctor visits. But we got somebody who goes with us every time we go to us. He'll go with you. I've watched God bring people all the way through cancer and then back. And, and it, it just, you feel sorry for people that are trying to make it without God. Uh, because there's something that, that some of these uh, elder saints can tell us. Uh, these people that have been around the block a couple of times. Uh, they know something. You can get some wisdom from them. And this is what it is. The wisdom is you don't wait until you got trouble to start praying. That this is what they taught me young. That you don't wait. Anybody knows to pray. All of a sudden your airplane's nose dive. I mean only a dummy's cussing at that moment. You, you undoing everything you said and done. Father forgive me Lord. Help us straighten this thing. Atheists are praying whenever there's a little turbulence. You understand? All you had to do is be alive during 9-11. And, and look at all the people that suddenly dropped their six back and started running for the church. Uh, so so, so what, what these elders can teach you is you don't wait until all hell is breaking loose against you. And the devil has opened the gates of hell wide open. And then you want to jump and pray. We pray ahead of time. We, we pray in front of problems. The, the difference in some folks is when something happens, they react to that, and, and nothing wrong with it, because but, but they should have been in church to begin with. Uh, if, if you're living for God, He can let you sidestep some things. There, there, there's a feast in the Bible, it's called the Feast of Passover. You ever heard of that? It's when the Lamb, the slain, coming out of Egypt, that's what Jesus eventually fulfilled. Uh, uh, that Passover Lamb was meant for when they put the blood of that lamb over the doorpost of the house. When that death angel come creeping through there to see who was going to mess up, if he saw the blood that was pre-posted there, he would pass over there. He come in there and say, I'm fixing to get this house. Well, they done something last night that prevents me from working tonight. Do you hear what I'm telling you? God is so good. He can give you a touch today that'll help you fight what you're about to face tomorrow. But we're not just serving God and praising God about what all He's done. We say, God, I'm praising you because I'm, I'm assured that you got next week in your hand. In the next month, and I, I just want to tell you, I'm I, I'm not I'm not afraid, I'm not upset, I'm not worried, I'm not anxious. Uh, times look bad, things are things put look pretty bleak. I understand that, but God called us to be here for such a time as this. I, I, I don't know if just anybody could deal with the spiritual warfare of 2024, but God handpicked you and me to be here for such a time as this. That will make you say, hey, I 
I must be on God's VIP list here. He didn't trust Peter with this. He didn't give this to James or God. He said, but in the last days, when pain starts waxing worse and worse, I'm going to pull my A-team out. I'm going to pull out some people that know how to take a licking and keep on kicking. Is there anybody here that says, I've kind of been through enough already to know if he can get me through that, he's sure going to get me through that. Some of you have been through too much to start doubting God. Now, after all he's done for you, after the way he come and set you up and got you free, you need to tell the devil that he can bless me once, he can bless me again. If God can do this one time, he can do it another time. And that, that's one of the enemy's favorite tricks is to say, well, God's done all he can do. I learned this from, from needing vehicles because when you do what I do, you can wear a vehicle out fast. We just put miles on them, just, just rack them up fast. And, and, and God would always bless me uh, for over 20 years evangelizing. I wore out trucks and fit wheels and, and putting hundreds of thousands of miles on them. And, and, and when the Lord first blessed me one time, somebody helped me get a vehicle. Uh, they come in and did some help and give me some money and some things worked out. And it was absolutely a miracle. But can I tell you, as I started getting down to that, after I got about 300,000 miles, I was on that old truck, and I'm thinking, God, the devil said, you're in trouble now. Your blessing was 300,000 miles ago. What you going to do now? He had me delusional for a moment, and then I started thinking, I said, devil, let me explain something to you. If God can help me get this vehicle, I ought not to be sitting here saying, well, how can God do it? If he did it the first time, he's going to do it the second six to seven right now. Some of you are here, you need to raise your hand up and say, hey God, I declare and decree that next week, the next month, what's ahead of me, you already ahead of me. You already went up into that. You already in my next week. You already at that doctor's room. You're not behind me, you're ahead of me. The Bible said for the Lord your God shall go before you. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to get it before you need it. I'm going to read something to y'all. I, I love you, Pastor Riddle. I love you. I love your spirit. I appreciate your hospitality and being kind to invite me. Let, let, let me read two things to you here. I, I'm pretty much going to preach what I got to say. But I'm going to give you two scriptures so you can go home with them. I'm going to be quick and to the point so we can come back tonight and have a move of God. So I'm, I'm going to be very quickly. Psalms 34 and 20. Uh, it simply says, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Psalms 34, 20. This is, this is being prophesied uh, over a thousand years before Jesus is even going to be on the cross. It's being prophesied that not a bone of his shall be broken. Now, now let me show you something. This is how promises work. This is how prophecies work, okay? It works like this. God will give you a word way back here that sometimes don't seem to make a lick of sense. God will promise you something or tell you something, and then here's what happens. Some of you, some of you are going, going to nearly shout when I say this. God will say, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And the next thing that starts happening within 24 hours, everything opposite of that. Am I telling you the truth here? I'm going to be speaking the same language in Mississippi. Am I the only one that God said, I'm fixing to bless you. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that Ajax can't watch you. You think, my God, and you wake up the next morning and you got a flat. See? And, and, and then you, you wake up in the middle of the night and the air conditioner goes out. Right? Yeah, and then also this food fuel pump, and then and, 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 and then whatever the baptistry overruns, and then everything just and you're like, my God, why did the Lord tell me that if all this was going to happen? Because He knew all that was going to happen. So way before all that mess, He started telling you, here's where you're going to wind up, here's where you're going to be, this is what I'm going to do, this is how you're going to look. I'm not going to tell you about the middle, just survive the middle and get to the end, because in the end, you shall win and you will not lose. Tell, tell Black Zion Pentecostal Church that God has promised you a good ending. You got a good ending. He 
he's Alpha and Omega. He's not the middle. He don't talk about the middle. If, if, if God told you the middle, uh, you wouldn't even come back. You'd be ready to give it up. <laughs> he said this. Anything that happens that I didn't tell you about, just know that's why I didn't tell you about it. Because had you had known, we wouldn't be at this church. He said, so there's some unknown things, but I'm not going to tell you about. But I am going to tell you the things that you need so that you can prepare and fight with me. Listen to this. this so that last verse I'm going to give you. Listen to this verse. This is a very powerful verse. Uh, this is this is First Timothy 1 and 18. Paul's telling Timothy, he said, This I charge and commit unto thee, my son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest fight a good warfare. In other words, you're going to take the word that the preacher preached, and then when the trouble starts coming, you're going to start saying, The Lord said. The word of the Lord said. The preacher preached and said, I was promised over. I was prophesied over. I was preached over. I was declared over. No, I know that's what the doctor has said, but this is what the preacher preached the other night. You gotta come to, to terms whose report you gonna believe. Now, now, I don't know if y'all feel like I feel over here, but 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 I have done come to the point that it's hilarious. It's nothing but a joke. It's nothing about like a circus watching the news anymore. They couldn't tell you the truth standing on a stack of King James Bibles with a hand up in the air looking at Jesus. They couldn't tell you. They couldn't get it right to save their life. And, and if you want to mess yourself up, you sit around and listen to people that every time you got a solution, they got another problem. And here's another problem. Here's a problem of him, problem of that, problem of that. I'm, I'm turning off the problem looking people. I'm not looking for the problem police. I think there's a problem over here. I think we got a problem over here. Listen to me, devil. You can surveil me all you want, but when you find me, I'm not going to be talking about the problem. I'm going to be praising the answer to the problem. I'm going to be giving glory to him who told me I was going to win before I ever got in the fight. I, I was preaching down in, in, in Florida, and um, uh, in that service, there was a, a girl who came. She's a Messianic Jew, which means she's a Christian believer. She's a Jewish believer. Holy Ghost filled, been baptized in Jesus' name, but she was backslidden away from the Lord. And she drove a couple hours to be in that meeting. I was preaching, and uh, I, I called her out and prayed for her. I don't even know what I told her. I just know what she told me afterward. Uh, she The next night, uh, she told her mother, she said, I went to a church other night. And she said, the power of God hit me so strong. She said, I fell out speaking in tongues. And the preacher prayed, prophesied some things over me. And she told her mama, she said, I want you to come with me tonight. I, 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 wanna, I want you to help me see if this preacher's real. You, you tell me, is this a Jedi mind trick? Or is this real? So so she, she brings her mother to the service the next night. And, and she tells her mama when they get outside, she says, Now I'm going to sit over here where I sat last night. But I want you to go sit over there. So that way we can't be tipping him and nobody off. Uh, if it's God, we don't know this is God. He, he will have no way of knowing that we're together. So one comes in, another one comes in. But you can't hide from the Holy Ghost. I'm preaching along and I look at that lady. She's sitting over here, her mother, and, and I started praying for her mother. I said, ma'am, uh, the Lord showed me you're about to have what looks like a heart attack. It's going to look, everything is going to feel like a heart attack, be diagnosed as a heart attack. But the Lord told me to tell you that you will not have a heart attack. That the enemy is going to try to bring the spirit of a heart attack. But don't accept it, don't agree with it. You shall live and you shall not die. About uh, about two weeks or so after that service, the young lady, her, her daughter, uh, con started contacting me on 
messenger and my phone's blowing up and she leaves me a message and she says my mother was on a carnival cruise with us uh, today and said she had a massive heart attack. This is just about two and a half weeks after the Lord said you're not going to have a heart attack but it'll look like a heart attack. He, she said so they are mid flighting her. They, they're putting her on a helicopter mid flighting her to Miami. She said I'm on my way there now. She starts texting me later. I'm trying to find out. I'm praying for this lady. And, 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 and the, the young lady tells me. She, she said I gotta tell you what's been going on here with mama. She said you know said she's at the point of death. Blue you know lips. She said she said had a heart attack. She said but she's got my phone that I was recording that night when that word went forth that said lady you gonna have what looks like a heart attack but, but it won't really be a heart attack don't agree with it you read the report of the Lord you will live and you won't die said she has that laying on her chest and every time they finish playing she hits replay again and every time it stops, she said, hit it again. She said, as a matter of fact, the doctor has come in here to try to talk to her and said, all my mama do is hold the phone up and say, listen to this doctor. I ain't had no heart attack. I ain't had no heart attack. I he said, ma'am, he said, I need you to put your phone down and listen to me. He said, I'm trying to explain to you, we got to do bypass surgery on you in the morning. You've had a massive heart attack. We're going to have to do like triple or quadruple, whatever bypass on you. She said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. She turned that phone back on. She said, uh-uh, I'm not receiving that. I believe this. Okay. The doctor got aggravated and left, went out. And this little lady took, she said, my mama done made them all that. She won't cooperate. She won't listen to nothing they said. She's calling them a bunch of liars. She said, the Bible said, let God be true and let every man be a liar. The doctor come rolling back in uh, that next morning uh, before they were uh, getting ready to prep her to take her to surgery. He comes in, him and some other doctors, and they said he was scratching his head, standing around, walking around. And, and, and Carol looks at him and been playing that thing all night. Said, You want me to play it again? He, 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 she, she said, she said, Doctor, what, what's going on? You, you, what, what, what's happening? She said, Well, I don't feel like I'm, I'm sick. I don't feel like I've had a heart attack. He said, Well, that's the thing I want to talk to you about, ma'am. He said, It looks like something. I don't know what's happened. He said, But you obviously now that I'm looking at it, you did not have a heart attack. She said, I told you. He said, I knew you were going to say that, but, but. But but he said, I think what happened, you got dehydrated, and you was out there got to sweating, and you on a cruise, and you got dehydrated, and that probably made it, made us, you know, we thought it looked like the symptoms of a heart. She said, oh, is that right? She said, let me explain something to you, doctor. She said, I did have a heart attack. She said, I had a full-blown heart attack. But before it came, God told me, don't you believe in that? Don't you put your faith in that? Believe this. You shall live and you shall not die. She said, it came to be a heart attack, but God blocked that thing, made it pass over me like a house in Egypt. I wish somebody give God a wave off her. I said, well, something's passing over me. Trouble's coming from your house. But God said, uh-uh, you pass it over. A heart attack's coming. God said, uh-uh, you got to go around him. Oh, no, you come into trouble, but the Lord said, you can't. Saul really wanted to kill David, but he couldn't get the job done. How pretty can David be standing in the room? Saul pick up a spear, throw it just from here to there, and miss. First of all, do a little Bible research, you'll find that Saul was a Benjamite. And the Bible talks about a group of Benjamite men who were left-handed, who were the greatest spearsmen and bowsmen that you've ever seen. They were able to part your hair at just a, a, a several meters away. They are able to literally, the Bible says, hit a hair breath. Saul was too sharp to miss. He didn't miss. It was lined up 
It was on target. It was going right to its mark. It was about to take David out. It was about to put David's head uh, like wild game up on the wall. But before it could get there, there was a word over David's life that said, I have ripped the kingdom out of Saul's hand and I'm giving it to one who's a man after my own heart. David had a prophecy over his life that said, you will be king of Israel. I know you're a shepherd boy. I know you out here and you, 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 you're, you're about to be hit. You right in the side. But whenever that spear was coming across the room to kill David, the word of the Lord, that prophecy got up and knocked that spear down and said, not today, devil. You're not taking it. This boy's got a destiny. He's got a prophecy. You know why some of you are not dead yet? Because you got a prophecy over your life. Going ahead of the judges, God is going ahead of the court. 
hearts. He's going ahead of the decision as we're praising him right here. I, I feel in my spirit to tell somebody, you should really connect yourself with God in this because as you're connecting to him right now, he's depositing an angel in about two or three weeks when you got a thing coming up. You're going to find out God's already been. Oh, we should praise him for that. Lord, I'm going to find out you already went ahead of me. You already got ahead of that. Lord, my God, when did you go? I went on Sunday while you were praising me. I went down there and talked to the lawyer while you were praising me. I went down there and changed the medical report. I changed the diagnosis. I just switched it. When did you do it? You were busy worshiping me, and I was busy working for you. You, you, you were entertaining. I feel like I feel like tonight God's wanting to fill more people with the Holy Ghost and bring more deliverance. Tonight's going to be a night of deliverance. Everyone say deliverance. I, I, I want you to I want you to do something that's okay, Pastor. Uh, throughout your day today, whoever God lays on your heart. I want you to at least text them, if not call them, but get a message to them and tell them tonight we're having a miracle deliverance service in Jesus' name. People are going to be delivered and set free. If you know somebody that says, I'm always dealing with this, and I'm still say, hey, that thing you're dealing with, come on down here tonight. We're going to pray and let the Lord work it out. Hallelujah. So whatever their excuse is becomes their reason they need to come. Oh, I'm sick. Well, then you really need to come. Oh, I'm going through a big mess right now. Well, then you need to bring your big mess down here to the church house to a big God. So I, 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 I promise you that I would be quick and to the point. So I'm not going to belabor it. I just want to do one thing. Tonight, I'll pray for people. We'll do whatever God wants. But this is what I feel right now. I want us to pray for God to lay somebody on your heart that you need to contact today who needs to be here tonight. You understand that? God can do that. God can drop a person in your in your mind, but by the time you get in my, your vehicle, you'll begin to think, I, I need to call, I need to text this person. Would you slip your hands up to God? Let's go out praying like that. Come on, God wants to do something very special here tonight. Would you ask the Lord, show me God. Great and mighty things that I know not. Show me who it is you want me to contact. Let's just pray like that for a moment. Open your mouth and just pray that out loud. Every demonic spirit that we're trying to prevent people from being in this house tonight. Every stronghold that we're trying to resist a person from being in the house of the Lord tonight. We pray that your angels would go before us right now. Ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. There's a soul in the balance church. I feel it in my heart right now. There's somebody that we're travailing for right now. There's somebody who's who's hanging by a cobweb in the Holy Ghost. We're just making intercession. Hallelujah. God is speaking somebody's name to you. If God has shown your face to you of somebody to contact, then, then reach over and lay your hand on somebody next to you and pray that he does the same thing for them. Really. Hallelujah. And that's both of you. If God spoke somebody to you, reach over and pray for that other person next to you. Say, God, let them know a person. Let them know who it is. My Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in this church today. Hallelujah. I don't want to wear you out because I know what's going to happen tonight. I want you to be refreshed, but let's just wait on him for just a moment. Let's just wait upon him for just a moment. Hallelujah. 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 Tonight, God, let there be restoration, deliverance, miracles. Let spirits of bondage and strongholds of addiction. Let it be broken out of people's lives, God. Take the blinders off that Jezebel has put on. She called it the backslider return. Backslider come back. That's it, church. Pray like that's how to go out travailing in the Holy Ghost.
Church, come on. Can we lift our hands in this house? Come on. Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's feel out to the Lord just a little while longer. Come on, in this house. Come on, God is so good to us in this house.
Jesus felt it in the Holy Ghost to remind the church body that we're going to a place. These eight acres, we're going to a place. God is not through with us. At 347 Highway 342, Pontiac, Mississippi. And we all get excited and we begin to pack our bags when we say we're going to a place. Right? If you're going to a place, you've got to be prepared to go to the place. And I love it that we're all on board right now, Brother Johnson. I love it. God spoke to me about two years ago. Almost now. He spoke to me and he said, Give me the holiness and I'll give you the city. Church, if we're going to the next level, then we got to get prepared. Come on, somebody. We got to get prepared. With that holiness, no man can see the Lord. Without holiness, without it, you cannot go to the next level. I don't want any of us left behind from stepping up to that next level. I just felt reminded of the Holy Ghost. Give me the holiness and I'll give you the city. Everybody knows that this city is run rampant with addiction with foul spirits, with things that, with prodigals, with watered down word of God. I'm just being honest this morning. Give me the holiness and I'll give you the seed. We've got eight acres out here. Plenty enough room. Give me the holiness and I'll give you the seed. Brother John said, God gave me that word before it's even happened. How many believe that in the house? That God is going to take, that He's going to do His part. Johnson and his, his family and friend being with us. 
last night and this morning. How many is looking forward to tonight? Yeah. Come on now. Looking forward to a, a powerful move of God tonight. I do, I do. How many is going to get off to themselves and pray just a little while for the service today? Not forgetting our prayer meeting at 5, revive at 5. We're going to meet in here and we're just going to pray in all four corners. We're going to be laid out on these, in these middle aisles, the side aisles. Sister Felicia said, oh, here we go. Again. <laughs> and take it out. We're going to be praying for God just to move in this house. We've already seen and we know what deliverance looks like, feels like. It happened last Sunday night. When we're still seeing it. We've seen it months ago. Delivered. Delivered. Why do you tear in the altar like you do? Because somebody needs deliverance. Somebody needs to be set free. Somebody needs the gift of the Holy Ghost and fire. With the evidence of speaking an unknown tongue. If it was your baby, would you not tear it? If it was your baby that needed deliverance, would you not go the extra mile? I tell you, we all belong to each other in this house. We're all in this together. We're all trying to make it. Sister Mama, we're all trying to make it. Continue to remember our house missionaries, Brother Matthew Gager and his family in Israel, and Brother Ryan Thompson and his family in Brazil, South America. Continue to pray over every need and request made known this morning as service was beginning. We pray in this house that God blesses Israel. We dare not miss an opportunity to pray that. That God grants Jerusalem with peace. No one else this morning. I dare not end it. We just stamp a to be continued until 5 p.m. I almost said 5 a.m. Alright.
till 5 p.m. and we'll revive at 5. God bless everyone, every visitor that was in the house. We love each and every one of you. Practice at four for the youth.